Good evening, my friends, and welcome to another Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marta, where as always, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today, we are going to kick things off with a little something with quantum computing, as Intel have announced their first quantum computing testing tool. As Intel, alongside Blue Fours and A4, have created the first ever cryogenic wafer prober, which basically is used to test and validate qubits which are needed for quantum computing. And now it's the second pretty big thing that Intel have brought to the world of quantum computing. As you may recall, last year they developed their first quantum wafers and was considered a pretty massive step towards mass production of quantum chips. So the cryoprober tool, which is the sort of shorter name for the cryogenic wafer prober, will enable engineers to test these wafers at temperatures approaching absolute zero or zero degrees Kelvin. So basically prior to Intel bringing this technology to us, because of how qubits actually works, they must be measured at extremely low temperatures. And obviously this meant that small subsets of data often took days to collect. But this new tool from Intel and again, Blue Force and A4 will cut that down to mere minutes, which is pretty impressive to be honest. So obviously the hope is that we will see a pretty palpable acceleration in the development of quantum computing, which unfortunately has seen a bit of a slow as of late. And we have a bit of a statement here from Jim Clark, the director of quantum hardware over at Intel, and he says, quote, so far the past year, Intel has worked with Blue Force and A4 to combine our expertise and build a fast electrical characterization tool that can operate in the quantum regime. We hope that by designing this tool, the industry can use it to accelerate the progress of quantum computing. And quantum computers could obviously have just loads and loads of different uses. Like they could have from AI to medical tech to maths, anything really, because, well, they are basically capable of solving problems that were previously unsolvable. Because obviously conventional computers lose, use binary notation for computations. And again, these quantum computers use qubits, which can exist both as a zero and a one at the same time. So obviously Intel bringing these things to the to the field, I suppose, is a good way to put it, has definitely improved things for quantum computing. Of course, it's probably going to be some time before we see the real effects of this, but we have seen a lot of interesting research and a lot of interesting things happening in the world of quantum computing, so it is very cool to see this. Next up, we've got a little something from Samsung. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a downer, especially if you are the owner of a Samsung Smart TV, because, well, or if, really, because if you're planning to be, should I say, because Samsung is adding bloatware to its 2019 TVs because, well, basically McAfee showed up at their door with a big old sacks of cash and asked them to. Now, this is something that, unfortunately, we are used to a lot, especially with PCs. If you buy a pre-built PC or laptop, obviously, it comes with what feels like a metric ton of bloatware, and a lot of it is actually really hard to shift. And unfortunately, it seems smart TVs from Samsung are not immune to this. And Samsung is saying that they want to protect users from malware, which sounds good, I guess. But, you know, that, that, that sounds fine. Obviously, I don't want malware ever, but you could also argue, okay, they have their very own OS in play on these smart TVs, so why would you not just have something on the OS? Improvements made to the OS, and the answer is, well, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Obviously, Samsung are denying this, and obviously I don't have proof that this is the reason, so this is all alleged, but come on. Anyway... Here's a statement that Samsung have actually released. They've said, quote, McAfee extended its contract to have McAfee security for TV technology pre-installed on all Samsung smart TVs produced in 2019. Along with being the market leader in the smart TV category worldwide, Samsung is also the first company to pre-install security on these devices, underscoring its commitment to building security from the start. McAfee security for TV scans the apps that run on Samsung smart TVs to identify and remove malware. Now, obviously, it's not a huge deal to have bloatware on your TV. At least not a big of, as big of a deal as it is to have it on your PC or laptop. That's just frankly annoying, and I always hate clearing out. Like, a, when my mum gets a new laptop, I always have to like spend ages getting rid of all the, the rubbish that they put on there. But 
it is obviously not brilliant that something's being loaded on there for no real benefit because Samsung could easily just improve their OS that's already on the smart TV. You could also argue it's like, okay, now someone who is going to be building malware knows, okay, they've got the Tizen OS, which is already on the smart TV, and then they've got McAfee um, malware protection on there as well. Okay, so I'm just going to second bait both, basically. So, yes, it's obviously adding security, great, but it would be nice if there was the choice. That's all I'm saying. Anywho, from one piece of bad news to the next, I'm afraid, as Thunderclap, which is a hack, has made any PC or Mac with a Thunderbolt vulnerable. So I've pretty much given you the TLDR of this particular topic, and basically we have a new vulnerability doing the rounds by the name of Thunderclap. And basically if you have a MacBook, Windows, laptop, or really any PC that has a Thunderbolt port, you are unfortunately potentially going to be victim to this vulnerability. And this was discovered by a group of researchers at the Network and Distributed System Security Symposium in San Diego. And unfortunately, this is not just affecting those with Thunderbolt 3, but also older devices that have Thunderbolt connectivity through DisplayPort instead of USB-C. So if you're familiar at all with how Thunderbolt actually works, basically they are designed with OS level access and direct memory access in order to support the high speed data transfer video out and the other features that also come with Thunderbolt. So essentially the vulnerability is taking advantage of all of this high level access to do some pretty malicious harm. Obviously unwanted access to things like passwords, encryptions, keys, and any sensitive data stored on your system. However, it's not all doom and gloom. There is some good news, thankfully, as the team of researchers who discovered this actually discovered it back in 2016 and have been hard working with manufacturers to develop fixes for this ever since. So if you are running a MacBook or Apple PC with at least Mac OS 10.12.4, you should be partially protected from the bugs and new updates are obviously going to better address this as well and we're also seeing firmware level protection for devices from Windows 10 version 18.03 so basically if you have a Thunderbolt um, connection on your system basically update the computer regardless of what operating system you have the latest drivers updates all that sort of stuff are going to be the best protection you have against the Thunderclap vulnerability and if you want to go an extra level, you can also disable Thunderbolt protocols in your BIOS UE or UEFI settings. Now, thankfully, as well, you do have to be directly plugged in through the Thunderbolt port in order to take advantage of this particular vulnerability. So as long as you're careful about what you actually plug into your device, you should be absolutely fine. But I would still just advise just to update just in case, because it's, it's unlikely that you're going to fall victim to it. But you want to be protected just in case. So we're going to move on to something from AMD now. Now, thankfully, this is actually something that I think has the potential to be really cool, as we have a patent application that has been published today from AMD, and they are basically, well, have filed a patent, should I say, for its own method of variable rate shading. And if this name sounds familiar to you, it should, because, well, it is one of the most key non-RTX features that NVIDIA has for the Turing architecture. And basically this patent application was filed back in 2017 but has been published today and it definitely leads me and others to be believing that this is a feature we're going to be seeing filing its home on the Navi GPU architecture which we are expecting to see this year. So you might wonder what this actually is. So it's variable rate shaving or VRS for short, much easier on the old tongue to say VRS rather than variable rate shading and basically is a way for them to optimize the amount of work that your graphics silicon has to do at any one time. So essentially the TLDR is that VRS will give the GPU the ability to section out a frame and decide what needs some fine detail rendering and what parts don't need to be rendered in full detail. So for example, Sections with a lot of visible data, data, detail, excuse me, can remain at the standard rate, but something like the sky or maybe the sea or something like that can have a lower shading rate. And before you ask the question that I know is already on your mind, no, this is, would not affect image quality, but has the potential to actually offer genuine frame rate boost when gaming. Now, again, NVIDIA have already achieved this 
on the touring architecture so AMD are obviously chasing behind them but it would still be really cool to see this on the, the Navi architecture but it goes just beyond PC as well we already know that we're going to be seeing AMD at the heart once again of the next generation of Microsoft and Sony consoles, the PS5 and Xbox Scarlet or whatever it ends up being called when it actually hits store shelves. So potentially it could mean that we also see console games benefiting from this variable rate shading and we could see this actually bring some significant performance boosts to consoles, which would just be amazing, to be honest. Anyone who's watched this channel for a while will know that, you know, while it's great that we are seeing the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro obviously push towards 4K, I really would prefer them to focus more on getting us up past 60 FPS at a stable rate on console. Obviously, we have seen some games offer players the option, especially on the Xbox One X, but I would just love to see this extra breathing room used to see us finally crank up that frame rate a little. So essentially the architecture that we're going to be seeing in these consoles and obviously the Navi cards is just going to be much more efficient which is just potentially really really awesome. So just to kind of go back to NVIDIA's version of this, they have said that with VRS the 1660 tie has a 1.5 times higher frame rate than the GTX 1060, so we could see that performance uplift make its way to Navi and consoles. And speaking of Navi, by the way, because I know some of you have been asking about Paul's Navi video, uh, it was delayed because there have been so many new things that keep popping about Navi. Obviously, we don't want to do a video that's going to be outdated the next day because something big has come out about Navi. Um, but Paul has just finished his script today, so we should be seeing the Navi video soon. So. Thanks for your patience on that one guys, it is coming, don't you worry. So let's finish things up today with a rumour regarding DMC5. And basically what we've had here is some comments by the producer of Devil May Cry 5, Matt Walker. And basically he has teased the potential possibility of Devil May Cry 5 on the Nintendo Switch, or even if it's not DMC5, a DMC game on the Nintendo Switch. As he said in a statement, quote, We haven't announced anything for Switch, alright? We personally would love to play a DMC game on Switch. So... We could very much see this if it is actually possible, because obviously the Switch, as great as it is, I love my Switch, I've played it a lot to be honest. It is obviously the least powerful out of the current trio of consoles that we have, so as long as it can be brought at a reasonable performance level, then yeah, great, give it to me. And obviously Capcom is, as of late, been really paying attention to fans, like obviously they've been saying they're going to make Resident Evil 3 remake if it, if it gets enough traction from the fans and all this sort of stuff, and the Resident Evil 2 remake is a result of fan feedback and demand, so if Capcom looks at it and they say, yep, it could be possible, in terms of budget, time, performance, blah, 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 then we may see this happen. It won't even be the older games, even like the original DMC trilogy, for instance, on on the Switch. Yeah, great, why not? So, let the speculation commence, guys. That is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support means a huge deal to both myself and Paul, and I'll see you next time.